Have you heard about the fight that is going on right now between Apple and the Justice Department, along with the FBI, about trying to get into an iPhone that was once held by this guy, Syed Farouk? Now, a lot of the information that's out there has really just been misinformation about this case. So I thought it might be helpful to put together something of an explainer video. And so I'd like to welcome you to what is the very, very first of what we're calling the Mike Masnick Explains video series. And this one will be that I'm explaining Apple versus the FBI and presented by TechDirt and the Copia Institute. Now let's start by discussing why this case matters so much. The Department of Justice really, really, really wants you to believe that Apple views your privacy as nothing more than a marketing tool that helps them sell more iPhones. And thus, to the Department of Justice, this case is really about the choice between trying to help Apple sell more iPhones or letting terrorist attacks happen. And when you look at it that way, it seems very obvious that the Justice Department has a point. But the reality is that that's wrong. It's blatantly wrong. This case is not about privacy as a marketing vehicle for Apple versus security, but it's really about privacy and security and protecting yourself versus a different kind of security. And if that's the case, then the important thing is that you need to look very closely at the different trade-offs at play here and to ask about what is really the bigger risk. Is it a terrorist or a criminal using encryption in order to create some sort of plot or is the much more likely risk that your phone is exposed in some way to anyone, including malicious hackers, to other criminals, or to governments who want to get into your phone illegally. And so we want to go through five reasons why privacy, your privacy and security are so important and why you need to support encryption. And the security that the government is talking about in this case, where law enforcement can see through it, is not so important. Number one, what kind of security are we really talking about here? The Department of Justice and the FBI want you to believe that terrorist attacks are the big risk here. But remember, you're more likely to be fatally crushed by falling furniture than killed by a terrorist. Do we really need to put encryption at risk and our phones at risk for that kind of security when the reality is that it's very, very, very unlikely? Number two. The Department of Justice and the FBI keep talking about this concept of going dark, that because of encryption, they can't see what's happening anymore. But please consider a recent report that came out of Harvard called Don't Panic, in which they point out that this isn't true. Law enforcement today has more access to more information than ever before. That's because there's so much more out there that they're getting. Even with strong encryption, law enforcement still can get access to location info and metadata that's not encrypted or other data that isn't encrypted. And there's much, much more, especially as the Internet of Things grows and takes off, it's going to provide even more access to information. So as some people have pointed out, when law enforcement talks about going dark, they want you to picture this eclipse where the sun is disappearing. And the reality is that the, the information that is really strongly encrypted is a tiny dot on the sun. And in fact, that sun is growing larger and larger and larger. Number three, another study from Harvard looked at a worldwide survey of encryption products and saw that there were 865 encryption products currently on the the market from 55 different countries. 546 of those products are not from the US. They're from all over. Another report from the Open Technology Institute looked at the kinds of tools that ISIS was using and found that when it involved encryption, it was usually open source or non-US based. And that means pretty obviously that even if the Justice Department were able to get what it wanted, it wouldn't actually stop terrorists from using encryption. There's just too many other products out there. So what do they actually accomplish? Number four, the reason why Apple is building such secure iPhones is not about some sort of marketing ploy or not about trying to just keep the FBI out when they have a legitimate reason for getting in, but actually about keeping everyone safe. They want to keep you safe from stolen phones, from malicious hacks, and most importantly, from different vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities impact everyone and put everyone at risk. You may remember not too long ago, different vulnerabilities such as the Heartbleed bug or the Freak attack. These are vulnerabilities in encryption. In fact, the Freak vulnerability was actually leftover code from the last time we did this in the crypto wars from the 1990s, where companies were forced to build in tools that weakened encryption called export cipher suites. And this code, even though it was no longer necessary, stuck around for decades and actually created a hidden hole that put us all at risk. We don't want to do that again. In fact, just this week, security researchers at Johns Hopkins found new holes in Apple's existing encryption. And this is what security researchers do. They're finding, fixing, and patching vulnerabilities 
all the time. And yet, in this case here, the D Justice Department is trying to get Apple to introduce new vulnerabilities on purpose that potentially expose everyone and put us all at risk. A big part of the problem here is that many people think that when you talk about a back door or opening up a way to get into encryption, you're talking about a little door that you can just open and then close again. But the reality is that when you're putting a back door into encryption, you're basically demolishing part of the building. You're letting in lots of potential problems and you're putting everyone at much more risk. Number five, the precedent in this case is a big deal. We're talking about the All Writs Act, a very short law that was really written over 200 years ago. And it's a very vague law that allows the courts to issue writs that compel assistance to law enforcement from third parties. But there need to be limits on how far this can go. In this particular case, what the Justice Department is asking for is for Apple to write new code that will take away key security features in an iPhone so that the FBI is then able to brute force Syed Farouk's passcode and get into that iPhone. Now the key question is, where does this stop? What are the limits? What if, say, the FBI decides that it wants Apple to, wants to force Apple to write new code allowing the FBI to turn on the microphones in your iPhone and record what's going on in the room remotely? Or what if it wants to push an update with a keylogger so it can record everything that you're typing into your phone? Remember we talked earlier about the rise of the Internet of Things? What if the FBI could get court orders that force companies to write new code to get into all sorts of other things, such as your smartwatch, your Amazon Echo, your Nest thermostat, your new smart TV, or your internet connected car. Where does it stop? Where can we, the public, feel secure? Remember that the Fourth Amendment says that we have the right to be secure. So let's review here. As you consider and debate the trade-offs between privacy and security provided by encryption versus the security that the Justice Department is talking about, remember, number one, that the risk of terrorist attacks are very, very minimal. Number two, recognize that the threat of going dark is greatly exaggerated. Number three, encryption comes from all over. Stopping it in the U.S. is not going to do anything, really. Number four, the actual risk comes from vulnerabilities like Heartbleed. That is a high-risk situation, and as the complexity of encryption grows, then putting in a backdoor is really putting us all at risk by opening up tons of uh, problems. Number five, and finally, the precedent here in the All Writs Act is a big deal. It's going to impact so much more than just one iPhone. And when you think about all this, you realize that the debate here is really no debate at all. This is really about choosing between security and privacy for yourself versus putting everyone at risk. And that is why the security and privacy presented by strong encryption and what Apple provides is much more important than what the Justice Department is asking for. And it's why this case matters so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to this and watching this very first video of the Mike Masnick Explains series. Series. If you like this video, and I hope that you liked it very much, please check out our crowdfunding campaign on Beacon Reader and support us so that we can make more like this and do more reporting on this subject. Thanks again.